I thought I'd start off by giving you a flavour of life at confused.com. Um, I'll let the photographs speak for themselves. Um, we're an organisation that like people to be creative, and this is our one of our senior managers making a mask for the Christmas party. And as you see, we, we're quite happy to wear them in the office as well. Um, we're an organisation that likes people to feel comfortable and they can come to work however they, they like. Um, we ask them to dress accordingly. And here's another prime example. Um, we even extend that to our goldfish, Bob. But Bob got a bit fed up of all the dressing up and has sadly gone off to the big goldfish pond in the sky. Um, we, um, we encourage our staff to maintain a healthy lifestyle and fitness is a big part of what we do. And then when it all gets too much, we head to the beach. But I have to say, it's, um, it's not all fun and games at confused.com. Last year, we raised a staggering £11,500 for Tea Halfen, and this year we aim to raise even more. We have two Three Peaks Challenge teams. We're, run, sorry, we're cycling the Car 10 100-mile cycle from Cardiff to um, Tenby, and as you'll see, we're proud sponsors of it. And even some of us, me included, um, are jumping out an aeroplane for Tea Halfen later in April. So that's just a few of the events that we've had over the last couple of years. Um, and it'll give you kind of a flavour of what life's like at Confused. And this is me. For the eagle-eyed people, yes, my name is spelt wrong, but I kind of kept it like that because as a kid, I wanted to join the police force. So whoever put this together clearly knew a lot more about me than I thought they did. Um, this is the Wall of Fame, and this is something we do for staff when they come into the organisation. We ask them to put this together. It's just something quirky, it's something fun. It just allows them to express themselves, and we get to know them a little bit better. And as the organisation grows, it actually it's a really good reference point for people to go and find out who people are rather than just having a name. So there's a little bit of a photograph of them as well. Um, I've been at Confused since July 2007. There were 55 people there when I arrived. There's now 160. I have spent the last two years putting bums in seats. It's been challenging. It's been fun. And as an organisation, we've grown massively and we really don't look anything like we were back in uh, 2007. So let me talk a bit about the growth of Confused and hopefully, yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, Confused is actually part of the Admiral Group and Confused.com was born out of an idea that was kicked around in the early uh, 2000s. It started off as a directory for insurance products and then progressed to a model that tried to encourage customers to pay for the service. That clearly didn't work, so we're now a comparison site that actually encouraged people to come to the site and get car, car uh, comparison insurance and a whole other range of products. This is when Confused was established. Um, we try and do quirky things to celebrate our birthdays. Um, and as see, you see, there's about 27 hands there. So back in 2002, there was only 27 people. And it's important to say that all 27 people actually came from the main part of the uh, Admiral Group. It wasn't people that we brought in from outside the organisation to run the business. Um, I have to say the first five years of Confused Life was really interesting. It was a real roll up your sleeves, kind of get stuck in attitude. People were really jack of all trades. And if there was a problem or if there was an issue, people weren't afraid to say, I'll go and sort it out. I'll go and try and find a solution. Um, there was a real sense of empowerment in the organisation. One of the managers, um, I can't find his, there it is up there, Andy Brockway. He was one of the founding kind of a team, and he said that we were a group of people on a mission. They really didn't care what it took to actually get it off the ground. At one point, they didn't think they were going to succeed. It wasn't going to make any money, um, and they actually didn't know if it was legal or not. But they just they rolled their sleeves up. They they stood up to the challenge, and off they went, and they did it. Um, the managers had a very, very strong vision and common goal, 
and this was regularly cascaded to staff, what they would do would be, um, they had the things called gotchas, and they would sit around some really tacky looking sofas, and they would tell staff what was going on, tell them what the problems were, and really engage with them so that they knew exactly what was going to happen. Um, there was a real family sense, a real sort of a pride of being part of something new and part of something incredibly exciting. Um, and there was also very, very few um, limits and constraints around compliance, which we have to live and abide by these days. And we also have to engage far more actively with our uh, partners. Back then, we didn't do it. We just got on, we did the job, and it actually pushed the boundaries for staff. Staff were far more creative, and they were far more in it, in innovative. Um, and I think one of the main um, examples of that is something called Queen Bee, which was basically a piece of code that allowed prices to go back to the customers a lot quicker than it had done previously. And it improved our turnaround and improved the quotes and ultimately improved how many people were buying from our sites.